Hello and welcome to the 15th of our SECA F5 lecture recaps. This one was on budget analysis. So the first method that we looked at was our high-low method and what this did was it separated out our fixed and variable costs. So the first thing we calculated was our variable cost per unit and we got that by taking our high costs less the low costs over the high activity level where we had the high costs less the low activity level where we had the lower costs. That got us our variable cost per unit. We then needed to separate out our fixed costs. So we know that total costs equals variable costs plus fixed costs. So we take our total costs at the high activity level and we take our variable costs away from it to leave fixed costs. We calculate our variable costs as the variable cost per unit times the number of units at that high activity level. And that will leave you with your total fixed costs. And we did a little example of that in class. We then moved on to regression analysis. Remember, we're separating out fixed and variable costs here as well, or we're getting our total costs. And it's based on our straight line equation again, y equals a plus bx. Remember that y will depend on x. For example, if we think of our total costs, total costs equals fixed costs, plus variable cost per unit times the quantity produced. So if we think Y depends on X, that will mean that total costs depend on the quantity you produce. And that's exactly what you would expect. So A is the fixed amount, i.e. our fixed costs, and B is the relationship between X and Y. B is the relationship between total costs and the quantity produced. So the formulas here that are given to you in the exam for A and B, those are the two things that we're going to be trying to calculate. B will generally be your variable cost and A will be your fixed costs. How do you use that? Well, N is the number of pairs of data. So how many pairs of data you're given. Y will be the dependent, what we're calculating. X will be what Y depends on. And this is how we go about calculating it. You set up a little table. Okay, so we have X is the number of units, Y is the total costs at that number of units. We then need XY and X squared. Now what you need to do is if you forget what you need to calculate in your table, look at the formula on your formula sheet. It will tell you that you need XY and X squared. And remember that it's the totals at the bottom that you need, the 15.290, 229.54 and 39.1. In this example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six pairs of data. So six periods or six years, six pairs of data. So N will be six. So N is six, X is 15.2, Y is 90, XY is 229.54, and X squared is 39.1. Fill all of those into the formulas that are given to you on your formula sheet, and you'll get the answer. Simple as that. Practice a few of those to make sure you can do it. Okay, so do remember when you're looking at regression analysis that the relationship must be linear, i.e. the relationship must be there. If you're going outside the range of the data that you have, it will be less reliable. It is based on historic data, like a lot of these forecasting techniques. Less data means that it'll be less accurate. So really six pairs of data in our example isn't a lot you really want a lot of data to make the prediction accurate. It also assumes that Y can be predicted from X and that's not always necessarily the case. There may be other variables that you haven't taken into account. Average growth method. Well, this is um, the value in the final period over the value in the first period to the square root of the number of periods of growth and then subtract one from the answer that you get. So we did our example of a this in class. Remember that N is the number of growth periods, not the number of actual periods. So looking at this, we've got period one, two, three, four, and five. There are actually only four periods of growth between period one and two, between two and three, between three and four, and between four and five. So although there are five periods, there are only four periods of growth. So do remember that when you're using this. So what we did is we take the value in the final period, 262, put it over the value in the first period, 150, and put it to the square root of the, the number of periods of growth, i.e. four, 
subtract 1 and we get 0.15 or 15%. Practice plugging that into your calculator so you know how to actually do the calculation. And what that's giving you is the average growth per period. So you can see that the growth is from 150 to 262. But what our answer is telling us is that it's an average growth of 15% per period of growth. Lastly, then we started to look at our time series. So remember that this is a series of values over time. So maybe sales going up over time. So the elements to this will be your trend. Remember your trend is the underlying long-term movement, i.e. an upwards trend, a downwards trend. Seasonal variation, this is short-term fluctuations. So thinking about the seasons, but it could be weekly, monthly. Okay, cyclical variation. Well, this is longer than seasonal, but it's still a variation. And it may be for business cycles, for example. And lastly, a random component. This is for things that you couldn't predict, for unforeseen, things like the financial crisis. So the first thing we need to be able to calculate is the trend. The trend we calculate using moving averages. So this is an example of three year moving averages. So we have sales in periods one to six. We then get our three year moving total by adding up the first three, period one to three, then period two to four, then period three to five and four to six, etc. That gets you your three year moving total. Divide that total by three and that gets you your moving three year average. Now looking at the moving three year average we have here, well that tells you that we have an upward trend. Whereas if you look at sales, they go up, down, up, down, but generally using a move year, moving three year average, the trend is upwards. Little complicating factor comes into this whenever we look at our four period moving average. So it's done exactly the same. You calculate your moving four period total. You divide that by four. But what you need to do to get your trend is to take the midpoint of the moving four period average. So you do it exactly the same except take the midpoint of your moving four period average. For example, the first one is 2350 plus 2600 divided by 2 and that's the midpoint. So what this does is it removes your seasonal or cyclical variations and shows the overarching trend. Okay, so that was our session on budgetary analysis.